Right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, depending from which time zone you're connecting from. We will be giving uh, like one, two more minutes uh, to give time to everyone to join. And meanwhile, I would just like to say thank you to everyone uh, who have signed up for today's session. Uh, we are at the August uh, edition of our Dev Talk series, uh, and today we will be talking about OM config and everything you need to know about it. We have our experts here with us, Daniel and Shabi. Uh, we are going to guide you uh, with uh, all this information you need to know. And from my side, my name is Daniel Nantu, and I'm going to be your host for today's session. And uh, I'm a an, an, uh, developer advocate for Zebra Technologies and I'm also an Android developer with over seven years of experience. And before starting and leaving the stage to our experts, I would just like to do some introductory, um, uh, some introductory things uh, like uh, some housekeeping rules. Uh, and I will ask now Dania to uh, move to the next slide, please. All right, so uh, if you haven't joined our community uh, or you don't know about the developer portal, uh, please feel free to join and sign up. Um, the developer portal is the main gateway uh, where you can ask questions and get answers from our experts for anything development related. We have uh, also lots of different articles uh, which you can read. We typically uh, publish them um, uh, each month. And at the same time, you can also find other sort of content uh, uh, on that site. It has also been uh, um, uh, redesigned uh, recently, so well, please make sure to give it a look. Also, you can find us uh, on our socials. Uh, so we are also on LinkedIn, uh, on Twitter. And at the same time, we do also have um, uh, our um, uh, organization on GitHub, our Zero Devs organization, which you can check out. Uh, uh, where we have different uh, and all sorts of repositories which you can uh, check for sample applications uh, uh, and use them for your development. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we do have some upcoming events. So just to uh, link them, uh, we have DEF CON approaching and DEF CON is a very important event for us. Uh, we have been uh, working on DEF CON for quite some time now. Uh, and it is finally approaching. Uh, we are going to be in Madrid. It's going to be uh, from the 13th uh, to the 15th of September. So three, it's going to be a three days event. Um, uh, we will be having over uh, 50 um, um, breakout sessions, um, similar like how we are doing our Dev Talks, uh, but uh, it's just it's going to be in person. Uh, we are also going to prepare keynotes uh, from our uh, partners, uh, such as DeepSense.ai and also Google. Google is also going to join us, uh, but also we are going to have keynotes from our executive leadership, uh, uh, including from our CTO Tom Bianculli, and also from our uh, and also from uh, James Morley Smith, uh, who is our global uh, director of uh, user experience. So um, registration are still open. So in case you're interested and you want to sign up and pay for your ticket, uh, you will be able to find the link in the chat. So you can check out the agenda and all the other sorts of information for uh, the event. Also, we are going to be at Drycon London uh, later this October. It's going to be from the 26th to the 27th. Uh, and we are going to have our booth over there uh, and we are going to have our team uh, so in case you are going to join Droikon, uh, you're going to be in the area, um, um, make sure to, uh, to, give us a, to give us a visit and say, and say hi to us. Um, and uh, with this, um, uh, I would just like to add that um, we, uh, the session is going to be recorded. So in case you are going to miss out some information or you just want to re rewatch it in a second time, uh, you will be able to see it um, on YouTube, uh, same like the other recordings uh, that uh, we have done with the other uh, with the other sessions. So 
by going on YouTube, just write in the search bar uh, Zebra Dev Talks, uh, and I'm sure that the first result will be uh, the playlist containing all of our sessions. Uh, and also at the same time, uh, we are going to have a Q&A um, um, small session by the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, any doubts, uh, just write them down in the uh, Q&A uh, box, which you can find in your sidebar. And we will be trying our best to answer all of them uh, by the end. Um, also, you can also find on the sidebar a handout, uh, a small menu. So that's going to contain some useful links uh, regarding the content which we are going to see today. All right, so that's pretty much from me. I will leave now the stage to uh, Chabi and Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Good morning, good evening, everybody. I am Dhanya Pillay, working in Zebra Technologies as a technical lead. I have more than 10 years of experience in Android application development and also core Java. Uh, along with me uh, also we have Shabi Thakur, who is also part of Zebra Technologies and uh, also a co-teammate. Um, yeah, so the topic for today's presentation is what is new in Zebra OEM config. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, uh, let me give an overview about OEM config. OEM config is an administrative tool for configuring Zebra managed configurations. So um, whenever we don't have any Android APIs available, so it is a, a available method uh, that with Google specifications uh, that is approved by the Android community. community. And uh, OEM config uh, interfaces with Zebra Android, Zebra device manager and it is a JS based uh, framework and wherein it has its own capabilities of uh, up talking with the below layers of Android and the APIs and OEM config works through the Android enterprise APIs as possible and OEM config and Zebra schema they are available from Google Play Store and they can be used together to configure Zebra Android devices so the schema uh, provides uh, a data-driven UI uh, through which uh, e by our EMM console, we can configure this manage configurations. So for detailed list of configuration parameters, uh, at Tech Talks, we have a, a documentation. So we can get go, go through the documentation to understand what are the features or the configurations that is supported by OEM config. So um, yeah, this is OEM config uh, workflow, a picturized representation. So um, when any new feature gets implemented in OEM config, uh, Zebra will publish this new APK along with the new schema to Play Store. So EMMs can access this APK and schema via managed Play Store. So um, in EMM console, a data-driven UI will be shown uh, with the schema that is uh, retrieved from the Play Store. Admin can select these managed configurations and apply this policy onto the device. Um, whereas in this OEM config APK gets installed on the device and then the configuration. So that is the policies also we can push to the device. So uh, this is a OEM config workflow. So yeah, what is new in Zebra OEM config? Uh, we have right now two versions of OEM config. Uh, that is a legacy OEM config and new Zebra OEM config. And also we have done uh, considerable changes in the schema as a part of restructuring. And uh, so OEM config managed configuration. So right now it is it is restructured and simplified uh, with a few things uh, that are the subtopics that we will uh, cover in the upcoming slides and also feedback channel. So it is a way of providing feedback to EMM. So we also have done some improvements in the feedback channel and we are supporting Google iframe specification and also we have a new icon for the new Zebra OEM config. So yeah, as I said, we have two versions of OEM config. Uh, so 
the new Zebra uh, application is Zebra OEM config powered by MX, titled as it as like this, and with package com Zebra OEM config release. And this new version is 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 only supported from Android 11 and later. So uh, a documentation is also available for the same. And also we have legacy Zebra OEM config, which is uh, only supported until A11. That, is, that means it is, it is not compatible with devices running Android 13 or later. So it is a, uh, the new Zebra OEM config is a replacement for the legacy Zebra OEM config. And um, the usage recommendations, so devices running and running A10 and earlier must use legacy Zebra OEM config, whereas in devices running A11 and later must use OEM config powered by Max. So um, this is the uh, structure of OEM config new schema. So so we can see here mm, very less uh, managed configurations in the root level, whereas in if we go to the next slide so it is a legacy zebra oem config so it has uh, many configurations in in the in the first level so we have restructured the new schema in uh, such a, a way that it has less configurations in the in the root level and we have categorized uh, and structured and simplified it so that that makes a admin job easier and it has a it has nested levels until um, hierarchy until five. So all this all the configurations are grouped and categorized under these main configurations. Uh, yeah. So um, we have when we uh, talk about managed configurations, we have two things that is mainly action and settings. So um, an action is an operation that is performed on a device to produce a specific behavior. So if I have to say an example of action, then it would be a device to perform device reboot or uh, factory reset of a device. Whereas in uh, these actions, they does not have any particular state where we can read or understand the state of state of that configurations. And uh, whereas in setting, uh, a setting has a a state where which we can read that means for example a uh, bluetooth turn on turn off so we can understand what is the uh, that particular set state of that particular setting by querying the apis or understand the current state so uh, such kind of a setting repeating such kind of a setting may not be um, harmful to the device or it may not cause a side effect to the device but uh, repeating an action can cause some side effects or undesirable impact on the device. So uh, that is why we have done certain changes to the action. So, so that we will explain in the coming slides. Settings versus actions. So settings are officially supported by uh, OEM config is as per Google guidelines. And Google defines that all settings will be reapplied at any time a change is made to any setting. So when we reapply any setting, all the prior settings also gets reapplied. So usually the repetition of the settings is it is it is not harmful and it is acceptable. Uh, but in some cases there are exceptions where applying a setting again, repeating a setting again can cause some uh, undesirable effects on the device. So in such cases we need to have a way to suppress that repetition. So whereas in action uh, is is officially is not uh, supported as per Google guidelines. So uh, because when when any settings gets reapplied, even action also gets applied. So we can imagine if there is a uh, previous action to upgrade uh, a de uh, device. So when any setting gets changed, so we we may get the same action again and again right so that is not uh, that is not proper so that can that also that can have some kind of uh, undesirable effect on the device so so action should be 
only action should be only done when the that is explicitly requested by admin so right now there is no practical way for oem config to understand whether an action is really repeated intentionally or unintentionally so the next one is uh, eliminate the low value or infrequent used actions so uh, we have identified certain actions that we do not have to continue to support in new uh, zebra oem config for example reboot or lock uh, reboot and or lock or sleep feature these are supported by dpm apis which can be used by a device owner which can be accessed by a device owner so such actions we have removed and also we have uh, found out certain actions which is not required to be supported by oem config like uh, a downgrade of a device so such actions also we have discontinued in new zebra oem config and also uh, we have converted certain actions to settings so that we can avoid this repetition uh, so mm, for example uh, rfid configuration so it has an action uh, update firmware so we can uh, so in some cases right so actions may uh, not have a proper state to read but in some cases we can convert this action to a setting and we can have some uh, if that action can have um, a kind of uh, state where for an example in rfid configuration we can we can check the firmware file and see whether the previously applied configuration is same as the currently applied configuration so if there is no change to that configuration then we need not apply it again so we can suppress it so thereby that will not cause any side effect whereas and if he repeatedly does that again and again when any setting got applied so that may not be proper so uh, so some settings we some actions we have identified where we can convert those to settings so such actions we have converted into settings so in some cases it is it is not possible so uh, that we have discontinued yeah so even settings also uh, some settings also can have uh, this issue when when it is applied repeatedly it can also have some undesirable effects on the device uh, for example clock configuration uh, so a clock configuration contains a, a manual time and we can set a date and time on the device so uh, when we do that re repeatedly so what happens so this it the clock has already moved forward so if we repeat it with uh, with that old it uh, whatever the current date and time there is a chance like it will go the clock will set backward right so so there should be a way to understand the the date and compare between the date and uh, time value that has come and check what was the uh, previous value that is set so we can avoid any attempt to set the clock backward uh, and uh, feedback channel uh, yeah so we uh, have a way of sending the feedback to emm uh, so uh, previously in all schema we were using uh, configurations like uh, transaction id and uh, also we used to have a combined a one key and also we used to combine all the errors and then send back as a single uh, a single state or single key dap state so whereas in now we have for each managed configuration we have a unique identifier that is a managed configuration key is a unique identifier so that that same key we have taken and this applying to the feedback uh, api's key and also there is a message so we are using the transaction success or failed uh, message and also a timestamp uh, so it gets automatically uh, set when any key dap state uh, is set and also we have severity uh, where we can set if it's there is an error then it is set to severity error and uh, if it is severity uh, info then it is a uh, it is success 
So uh, these are the feedback channel enhancements we have done. And also we had identified uh, uh, Google iframes uh, specifications. We were we had done some changes in order to support that. So we were previously having uh, some concerns with old uh, schema OEM config. Uh, whereas in where uh, we were having uh, issues when we have we were getting a default value for uh, for all the configurations when it is getting applied via the iframes framework. So with this new Zebra OEM config, we have handled the default values for all the configurations. And uh, so now even with iframes, so we are fully even compliant with the iframes uh, framework as well. So yeah, so now. Uh, I would want to showcase a demo. So it's a pre-recorded demo on uh, installing and applying the managed configurations on uh, new uh, OEM config via uh, SOTI EMM console. So yeah, uh, let's see the demo. So here we can see, right? So uh, via SOTI EMM console, we have gone to the managed Google Play Store and we are selecting Zebra OEM config. So we can see two OEM config legacy and the new Zebra OEM config. So this is the legacy Zebra OEM config. Now, uh, this is the Zebra OEM config powered by MX, which is the latest OEM config. And we are selecting uh, this new Zebra OEM config. Yeah, we are selecting the device and applying the policy to the device. So we can see on the device, the APK is getting installed. Yeah, so APK got installed. So now we will apply the managed configurations of Zebra new OEM config. So we are going to the config, manage app config. So here we can see this configuration. So this is the schema which I was uh, talking about so we can see settings keyboard general UI configuration. So this is all derived from the schema of uh, Zebra OEM config. So we are going to set uh, the battery percentage icon show and height and also two other configurations that is a, a display font size and display size. So we are going to the display configuration. And going to set uh, display size and phone size. And also battery percentage show. So we are going to push these policies to the device. Yeah, we'll wait for a while. So we can see now 100%. Uh, so we can see the battery percentage now showing on the device. And also now we'll go to settings and see uh, the display uh, size and the font size set. So now we can see the font size set to large and display size set to large.
So yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's it. So we can uh, end it in the Q and A. All right. So we so we do have two questions actually. Um, the first one being, when do we get a better documentation of tech docs, especially with samples uh, for all settings? So already the documentation is available. So um, whenever there is any any change in any configurations, right? So uh, the documentation is also gets updated, and these documentation links are uh, available in in even in our Zebra support portal. And also, we will also be sharing the links uh, also. All right. Well, in any case, so we can we can anytime. Um, I mean, if we do get uh, any sorts of specific uh, um, configuration that are needed, we can anytime yeah. just talk with yeah. the tech docs team, right. and right. Um, we can yeah. then publish yeah. the the example. So yeah. All right. Um, thank you. I will just move to the second one. <clears throat> so. Uh, this one uh, says, does the new ON config uh, support stage now XML import? So uh, yeah, we we can uh, provide an XML in new Zebra OEM config. So it supports both XML and JS as well. So we can uh, XML whatever XML that we we uh, export right via stage now. So we can use that XML in OEM config. So that feature is, is already there. Okay, perfect. We do have a couple of more questions. So uh, next one, uh, what parsing rule did you use to make on config to check in with the new settings? Okay, can you come again? Yeah, so the question was, what file thing rule uh, did you use to make Coin config uh, to check in with the new settings? Uh? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so um, so before adding any new configuration to OEM config, so first thing is, so we are going to check if this configuration is already available uh, via a device policy manager API or a device owner is able to do this configuration. So we are not going to support that uh, in OEM config. And also if that particular configuration causes any kind of undesirable effects on the device, right? So for example, Wi-Fi turn on, turn off. So such features we are not supporting because turning off the Wi-Fi is the device will go offline. So so there are certain uh, criteria so which we have our, uh, our uh, architecture team also will pitch in. So based on that, so we'll determine whether a feature has to go to OEM config or not. Otherwise, any new features, whereas and when it gets added to stage now, it gets it that also uh, will be part of OEM config as well. All right, perfect. Uh, moving to the next. So um, if stage is supported, where is it set? So this is the question. Uh, can you? Please read it again. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if a particular configuration, uh, for example, uh, if it's a app manager configuration, so if it is under stage now app manager, so um, so we, if we see the tech documentation, so all the app management related configurations are specified under the packages configuration of OEM config. So it is not actually exactly matching with the stage now uh, naming conventions. Right, so OEM config has uh, eight on sets of configuration and it's on a uh, way of uh, naming and conventions. So, based on that, it is grouped. So, uh, so most likely you can say, like, if any uh, UI manager configurations, even uh, even in OEM config, also we have some category called as UI manager, so you can find that under UI manager. And also, if it is a setting manager configuration, there is also something called as a settings configuration, so you can find it under there. And if it's an app manager configuration, then it would be like a, under packages configuration. So, uh, so it is it is like that. So, uh, with with documentation, uh, if going to the documentation, it is it is easy to identify whenever any new features right uh, gets uh, released in OEM config. So, what is new, you can find in with the tech talks, which will help us to understand where it is actually there in OEM config. All right, perfect. Um, so the next one is, uh, um, uh, I guess the meaning of the question should be this one. So is OEM config helpful uh, 
to uh, for the OI, uh, for the OS update through stage now, or is it only for the EMM? So, so I guess this should be self-explanatory. Okay. The the answer. Okay. okay so. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, what I'm guessing is they're asking like, uh, so whether, uh, okay, stage now, so OEM config is, is having a, it's on different route, right? And yeah, stage now is, is a, so, but it both reaches to a same place, which is MX or ZDM, but it's a, it's both are different route. So OEM config is one way via EMMs we can uh, apply the configuration. And uh, so stage now is a, is a, is another different way, right? So via, OEM config also you can upgrade the device based on yeah, what exactly. I have understood the question. Yeah. 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 That was it. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, you. Uh, so um, we do have uh, some other questions. <laughs> um, so the next one is: Is there any hands-on for new version? Now? Okay. Mm, right now we don't have any uh, a demo or anything published i believe if, if my understanding is what is the question uh, um, but, but yeah yeah maybe from the question i think um like some um could be recording or anything uh, that could uh, show yeah yeah something right, like right, what right. You, you have done right now in the yeah. video maybe right so right now it is it is not available anywhere publicly yeah okay uh, is there any um, any time or anything that uh, you guys are going to publish or anything of sorts? Yeah, that we can. Uh, yeah, that we will uh, get back. We can. We will discuss internally about this. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question: When do we support sending an intent? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, with uh, right now we don't have a way to send an intent uh, with intent configurations, but we can do it via pass through command so there is a feature called as pass through whereas you can pass any xml so even an intent also you can pass pass intent xml also you can pass it through the pass through command feature so any any xml you can submit there all right perfect so next question is um, um if a customer updates from uh, android 10 to android 11 is there a conversion tool or do they have to start from scratch? Um, okay, right. Uh, so they have to, they need to install uh, new Zebra OEM config from A13. I mean, but still A in on A11, well, both should... the versions are supported. Exactly. Yeah, both the versions, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, both versions so, are supported. Yeah, so it still, still, still should be supported, yeah. yeah. All right, um, next question. Um, so the so-called uh, pass-through XML function can be used to process XML or uh, JX uh, exported from stage now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I mean, we do. We did answer also previously with the uh, with the other question. All right. So we still have two more questions. Um, so um, so I'm. I'm Still process it because uh, okay so um, in the demo you if the demo user select the sync files uh, I'm sorry I think uh, so <laughs> this question needs to be rewritten because it's confusing I can't find exactly the um, the meaning of the question so um, it's related about the um, the sync files uh, um, um, so I would just ask the user Bolvina if you can just rewrite the question maybe in uh, in a different uh, in a different way maybe. And uh, I will just give a couple of more minutes for that uh, and see if there are any more questions. Uh, okay, we do have another one. So is Zebra and config automatically updated in 42 years, Daniel? Can you see uh, yeah. Can you still? Uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I can you read it again? Yeah, so is Zebra and config automatically getting updated in 42 years? Uh... Okay, uh, so what I understood this question is uh whether it gets updated automatically on the device uh, i guess is uh, I, I guess the question is um, uh, going towards the migration of when config is when config is getting automatically migrated to the new version or something like that i guess okay okay so uh, definitely you need to apply it uh, it it will not be happening automatically so uh, definitely admin needs to uh, apply the new zebra oem config to the device yeah exactly my my thoughts as well 
Okay, so any more questions? Uh, uh, Balvina, I still haven't got your updated question, so you still have some time if you want to for us to answer that. Uh, okay, yeah, got it now. All right. So when watching the live demo for pushing or copying via app policy after installed at the battery percent font and display, um, to large and saving up policy, there was a sync file uh, action performed to the device in SOTI and the ON config setting applied quick. Can you share how you created the SOTI file sync rule? Okay, uh, right now, because that, that is a pre recorded video, right? So is it asking like they want to see it again? or? Uh, yeah, I mean, she, she she's just trying to understand the, the rule that has been applied. I mean, we can, um, uh, um, I guess we can just, uh, but you know, maybe okay. if you can send an email uh, with the same yeah, question, sure. uh, to developer at developerzebra.com, uh, we'll be able to send your reply with the uh, uh, with the response uh, because it's uh, it's quite impossible here to do it otherwise. Yeah. Right. Uh, I guess we can actually uh, put in the chat the email address, so it should be this one. So that should be the address, the email address. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And. If there are no more questions, let's see. I guess not. Um, I think we can end it up here. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Hopefully it was worth it for your time. And uh, like I said, if you still have any questions or uh, anything that pops to your mind uh, after the session, actually we still have one question, okay. So uh, can we configure the device to share the device related <clears throat> hardware data with the applications already installed. Can I you think read this is... the question with me? What is it? Yeah, I don't think it's anything related to this, uh, but I will just say it. Mm -hmm. So can we configure the device um, to share the device related hardware data with the application already installed? Mm, no, right now we yeah. don't have any configuration as such that you can. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, my, exactly my thoughts, yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's, uh, so it's saying that uh, it is related to sending intent. Uh, okay. But in any case, I don't think that's possible in any way. Yeah, yeah. It's not, uh, it's not possible. Uh, yes, we did discuss that we can send intents, but that was for something else, if I understood correctly, Zonia. Yeah, yeah, so you if can, you, yeah. If you can just repeat, pass, yeah, the yeah. explanation, yeah. Yeah, so with the pass-through, it is, we, we can send an intent via the pass through feature of OEM config. Exactly, yeah. Hopefully it answered the question. Okay, so if there are no, no, we still have, okay. So if we can send an intent, can we add hardware data in that intent? The answer is still no, actually. <laughs> because there are any way other ways from which we can gather the hardware data. No, it's fine. Uh, I have, there are ways which we can gather the hardware data from the device, and, and this is by going through um, uh, from a, from a different way. Of, it, actually, let me just put it in the chat. Uh, so there is no way to query any data through OEM config. You can only apply the configuration. So if it is applied or not, just we can get the result. So there is no other uh, data or something that we can retrieve from the device through OEM config. Yeah, exactly. But uh, in any case, what uh, he's trying maybe to say, if we can take harder data from the device, which in that case might be from OM info, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to to say. Okay. Uh, but in any case, you can do that with uh, with OM config. That's uh, that's something else. Yeah. Yes. And so if you want to read the email values, uh, you will have to go with OM info, which is uh, something completely different. And we do have uh, documentation uh, for that. Uh, I'll just leave it in the in the chat. Uh, and there are different uh, uh, different uh, non resettable identifiers which can be fetched for, from that, um, such as serial number and uh, other type of uh, identifiers. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, so we still have. I don't think there is anyone left uh, for any questions. So we will just end up here. So. Uh, Again, thanks everyone for joining us today. And the recording will be available uh, shortly, uh, either tomorrow or uh, by the end of the week, uh, uh, depending by how this is going to get uploaded. And if you do have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out at 
the email I've uh, sent in the chat. That's uh, the developer at zebra.com. All right. So thanks everyone again and speak to you soon.